Imagine you're conducting an experiment. Your research question, are men taller than women? You form a hypothesis, men are taller. Meet the null hypothesis. It's like the skeptic in the room. It always says there's no difference between the two groups. So in this case, the null hypothesis would say men and women have the same average height. There's no difference. How do you test your hypothesis and overcome the null hypothesis? You find some women and you calculate their average height. You find a group of men and you calculate their average height. And look, there's a four inch difference. Men are taller. This seems to support your hypothesis, right? Well, maybe not. Pretend for a moment the null hypothesis is actually true. That means if we measure all of the women in the, in the world and we measure all of the men in the world, they would have the same average height. The problem is that your data was based on random samples. So when you sampled the women, maybe it just so happened that you selected the shortest women. And when you sampled the men, maybe you randomly picked the tallest men. So that four inch height difference that you found, that was just random chance. Do you find this convincing? Here's our conversation so far. I found a difference between men and women. How do you know your difference wasn't caused by random chance? That doesn't seem very likely. How likely is it? To answer that question, we need to perform a t-test. Let's repeat the same conversation, and this time we'll add the t-test, and this time you are talking to the null hypothesis. I found a difference between male and female heights. That's weird because there isn't actually a difference, says the null hypothesis. You reply, then why did I find one? Look, you just got lucky. If you repeat this experiment, you'll get totally different results. Your data is just an outlier. And you say, what's my data's p-value? The null hypothesis gets out its calculator and says, I'm getting 0.05 or 5%. That means if you perform this, this experiment 20 times in a row, you'd only get that four inch difference one time. I guess you're just really lucky. And you reply, that's highly improbable. P equals 0.05 is too low to accept. I reject the null hypothesis. To understand what just happened, let's see exactly how a t-test works. First, it assumes that the null hypothesis is true. Then we pretend that we repeat that same experiment many, many times. We ask the question, what are the odds that random chance would produce the four inch height difference you found between men and women? The answer to that question is the p-value. So what's a p-value? It's the probability that the measured difference, the four inches you found, would occur due to random chance alone if the null hypothesis were true. To understand this, let's see some examples of p-values. How often does your four inch difference occur? The p-value answers that question. Remember, we're assuming the null hypothesis is true. If P is 0.05, then that means your four inch height difference would only occur 5% of the time under the null hypothesis. In other words, the null hypothesis is saying, it's luck, there's no real difference. I'm not surprised because I expect that four inch difference to occur once every 20 repetitions of the experiment. Uh, that's not very convincing, is it? What if the p-value is 0.025? That means your four inch height difference would only occur two and a half percent of the time if the null hypothesis is true. 
So the null hypothesis is saying you're really, really lucky. There's no real difference. I'm not surprised because I expect you'll see 4-inch differences once every 40 repetitions. And you can see where this is going. If the p-value is 0.01, then your 4-inch difference would only occur 1% of the time under the null hypothesis. That means it would only occur once every 100 repetitions. Can we say there's no real difference? And at some point, it's so extreme and the odds are so terrible that we have to reject the null hypothesis for being too outrageous. Let's summarize. The lower the p-value, the more far-fetched the null hypothesis is. Normally, in science, we can reject the null hypothesis if p is less than 0.05, 5%. This is a convention that we've agreed on, um, and it works in most cases, but not in every case. As you study more statistics, you'll see why this convention doesn't apply to every scenario. It turns out there are many different types of statistical tests that we could perform. I mean, even a t-test has different varieties. Let's take a look at two. You would use an unpaired t-test when your experiment has two different groups performing the same task. For example, maybe you're testing some new medicine, and there are two groups, a placebo group that doesn't receive medicine and a treatment group that does, and you compare their health outcomes. Maybe you're testing the height of females versus the height of males. Maybe you're testing online shopping habits. One group is Americans and the other group is Europeans. In every case for these three experiments, there are two different groups being tested. On the other hand, maybe you need a paired t-test. That's what you would use if you tested the same group two different times. For example, maybe you were testing grip strength. You gave people the test before they had spinach, and then the same people tried again after they had eaten some spinach. The point is, it's the same group of people. Or perhaps you're testing quiz scores. People take notes on an iPad, they take a quiz. Then the same people take notes on paper, and they take the quiz again. As a final example, perhaps you're testing memory, a group performs a task with background music, and then the same group performs a task without background music, and you compare the results. Understanding which of these two is appropriate, that's an important thing for you to think about, and it's a nice thing to describe when you're writing up your report. Let's summarize what we've learned. A t-test assumes the null hypothesis to be true, then it evaluates whether that's a bad assumption using the p-value. The p-value tells us the probability that the two data sets would have differed due to random chance when we assume the null hypothesis to be true. If p is less than 0.05, you can reject the null hypothesis. This corresponds to what we call a 95% confidence interval. And finally, the t-test can be paired or unpaired, and whether you choose paired versus unpaired depends on the details of your experiment. This is an important thing to discuss in your report, and it's really nice to justify the particular t-test that you selected. Thanks for watching this video.